Would you give up choice to live longer? A book review on Suicide Club, a novel about living by Rachel Heng. Welcome to Amy Gets Lit. I'm your host, Amy. I hope that this video finds you well, reading great books, and enjoying life. It's been a minute since I've done a book review, so please forgive me. I know not what I do. Today I'm going to be talking about Suicide Club, a novel about living by Rachel Hang. I read this book in March as a buddy read with Emma from a couple of books. We read the book, we chatted about it, and then sent each other questions for our videos on our experience with the book. This has sort of morphed into a monthly thing that we're calling the Bibliotherapy Sessions. In April, we read Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, video forthcoming. And this month we're reading The Book of M by Peng Shepard. I've linked Emma's video to her review on The Suicide Club below. Go visit her and say hi. Suicide Club, a novel about living by Rachel Heng, was published in 2018 in the U.S. by Henry Holt and Company. This is Heng's debut as a novelist, and Suicide Club was listed as a most anticipated book of summer last year by Nylon, Tor.com, L, Huffington Post, among many others. From the publisher's website, in this debut set in near-future NYC, where lives last 300 years and the pursuit of immortality is all-consuming, Leah must choose between her estranged father and her chance to live forever. Leah Kirano is a lifer, which means that a roll of the genetic dice has given her the potential to live forever, if she does everything right, and Leah is an overachiever. She's a successful trader on the New York Exchange, where instead of stocks, human organs are now bought and sold. She has a beautiful apartment and a fiancé who rivals her in genetic perfection, and with the right balance of health tech, rigorous juicing, and low-impact exercise, she might never die. But Leah's perfect life is turned upside down when she spots her estranged father on a crowded sidewalk. His return marks the beginning of her downfall as she is drawn into his mysterious world of the Suicide Club, a network of powerful individuals and rebels who reject society's pursuit of immortality and instead to choose to live and die on their own terms. In this future world, death is not only taboo, it is also highly illegal. Soon, Leah is forced to choose between a sanitized, immortal existence and a short, bittersweet time with a man she has never really known, but who is the only family she has left in the world. Break it down. I included the publisher's take on this book because I simply do not believe it does the book justice. I went into this book with one idea in mind and felt like I was giving something different altogether. Now that said, I also think that the novel does not do the concept of the book justice either. There were great moments in Suicide Club, but too many moments that left me unsatisfied with the characters, world building, or general plot because the concepts were never really developed well. Leah is our main protagonist. She has everything going for her. Her mother was a woman of influence. She has a great job and is considered for a big promotion. Her apartment is amazing. Her fiance is too, and she's 100 years old, but looks like she's 30. The next wave of extended life is about to continue and Leah is pretty certain she's going to be selected and her life will be extended past the 200 to 300 years she's anticipating it now. Until one day, one action puts her in the crosshairs of the government and her perfect life begins to unravel. This story is a story of her unraveling. Kind of. There are moments of really great storytelling that really captured the emotion of aging and the emotions of caring for those that are aging. Hang did a wonderful job portraying different dynamics between socioeconomic groups, the lifers in the sub-100s, and familial relationships throughout the story as well. I thought the satirical look at our obsession with aging, vanity, and mortality was funny and smart. The theme she touches on in this book, who we are on the outside versus who we are on the inside, mortality, dying, beauty, death with dignity. They work together well, and I think she was successful in taking a critical look at these things. Ultimately though, Leah, our protagonist, fell short as a character for me. While I can understand the reasons why Hang created her to live within extremes, the before and the after of her father first leaving, and a major plot point I won't reveal here second, it made Leah a less interesting character and pretty two-dimensional to me. I felt that one of our secondary characters, Anya, was nicely developed and balanced. She did a really great job creating a character with competing motivations in Anya's development, and I feel the story would have been much better had it been told more about and from Anya's point of view than Leah's. I do think that she attempted to do the same thing with Leah, 
But the extreme behavior of Leah's past self to her present self, her before self to her after self, ended up doing the opposite. I believe the pacing of the story was really off. It took too long to get to the parts of the story that made it really interesting. Too much time was spent exploring Leah and her backstory when the story could be moving forward and staying on a more focused course of the promised premise and concept. I wanted more of the last half of the book and a lot less of the first half of the book. What I appreciate most about this book is the questions it made me ask myself. Will we reach that point that technology extends our lives in such artificial ways? Will we be willing to sacrifice the things we enjoy about living just to live longer? Will we be willing to give away choice to the government if they could extend our lives? What is quality of life? How does that impact when one should live and one should die? Who should get to dictate who lives, who dies, and when and why should they be given that power and control? And it made me explore the idea of dignity and death. Overall, I didn't hate this book. It was good and I enjoyed my time with it. I just didn't love it. And it isn't a book that I would reread. I feel like it left a lot to be desired and I give it three stars. Now, on to Emma's questions. Question one, what were the strongest parts of the book and what were the weakest for you? I think the strongest parts of the book for me are the dynamics Hen created in the relationships between various characters of this book and how they interact with each other and the world around them. For me, the weakest part was the world building. With such an interesting concept, I feel that Heng could have done so much more in showing us the technologies that were used to extend the lives of those chosen as lifers. I feel like I was just told that these technologies exist and that's it. To me, that was one of the most disappointing parts of this book. Question two, what scene resonated the most with you? There is a scene between Leah and her father on his birthday that I felt was so well done. The idea of them having been apart for so long and being able to share with each other this one perfect day was one of the highlights of my reading experience with this book. Number three, which character do you identify with most? I definitely identified the most with Anya. My mother became ill when I was a teenager and it impacted my life in so many ways, just as it has with Anya. I also really appreciate the duality in Anya's character and how it builds a complexity to her that I think is really realistic, particularly in light of her life circumstances. She lives in a world that she rejects and the way that she rejects it, in my opinion, is pretty darn brave. Question four. Now, now this question. This question really made me think a lot. If you could give this concept to another author, who would you want to rewrite this? I have two answers for this. Immediately, I think Octavia Butler. I think that she would be able to really make the world come alive while keeping in deeper emotional levels to the story. Since Miss Butler is no longer with us, my second answer is someone who is, and that is Neil Stevenson. I think that Stevenson would be able to really build the world and the technology that exists within it in a way that I was hoping it would be built here. And lastly, question number five, who would you recommend this book to? Who wouldn't you recommend it to? I would recommend this book to anyone who's interested in the idea of technology and mortality and maybe not be readers that thrive on a lot of world building. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone who might have difficulties with broader conversations on life and death or who need world building in their speculative fiction. If you've read Suicide Club, let me know your thoughts on the book below. I want to thank Emma for reading Suicide Club with me. It was my first buddy read and I really loved reading it with her. We'll be reading The Book of M by Peng Shepherd this month as I mentioned earlier. If you want to join us, let me know. You can leave a comment below or you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at amygetslit, all one word, no spaces. If you dig this video or any of my other content, pressing subscribe and giving me the thumbs up would be much appreciated as I run on books and validation. Haha. <laughs> I'm not joking. Leave a comment or an emoji and say hello. I love chatting away in the comment section. I know that time is a commodity and I thank you for gifting me your time today. As always, I hope you find something this week that brings you some joy. Until next time, bye-bye.